Good morning, world. Check this out. Dunkin' Donuts. It's like Timmy's of the U.S. Seriously, it's like Timmy's. There was a lineup almost all the way around the block, it seemed, for Dunkin' Donuts this morning at the drive-thru. I went in because obviously I'm in too big of a vehicle to go through the drive-thru. But uh, going in there, I could tell that it was pretty much the exact same atmosphere and feel of Tim Hortons. Not quite as good. I'm just going to go out there and say it. Not quite as good as Tim's, but I am a little biased. But I do love their coffee. And uh, they don't have as good of food selection as Tim's. But I got... It's going to be good anyways. I mean, it smells delicious. What was this one again? It was like a big, big breakfast sandwich. I think that's what it's called. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Yep. Looking forward to that. I'm going to have that right now. So yeah, if you Canadians are ever wondering what Dunkin' Donuts is when Americans are talking about it, just think American Tim Hortons. Sort of. Okay, let's uh, let's get going here. I'm done my pre-trip. Oh, we gotta keep moving along here. Gotta go deliver this lumber. Oh, there's one of those new Chevy Silverados. <laughs> my poor Silverado. Oh, I feel so bad for it. I do not like the new 2019 body design. The 2500s are all right though, if you get the high country, it's all right. As long as you don't have the, the whole word Chevrolet written across the front, I don't like that. But the high countries, they just have the bow, tag, uh, the bow tie. And I'm sure you could get the bow tie just on a regular pickup as well, but. Good thing I got an older Silverado. Maybe I'll just keep that one. All right, let's get to work, everybody. I had a great sleep. Dunkin' Donuts is just off to the left here. When I went in there, there was this big group of high school, Turn right on North Main Street. high school girls. I guess. Hey, excuse me. I'll forgive you this time. This time. There's a bunch of like young high school girls giggling and doing their little high school girl thing inside of Dunkin Donuts they're all on their smartphones and uh, made me think back to when I was in school it's been a while I graduated in 2006 Continue 21 kilometers on North Main Street. so I'm not sure how they uh, I'm pretty sure they have a very similar school system in uh, in America compared to Canada. We have kindergarten all the way up to grade 12. So, so 13 years of schooling and then you're done basic schooling. And after that you have post-secondary. And just like the US, kindergarten grade 12 is covered. You can go to public schools. I went to a, a private school, but you can get kindergarten grade 12 for free or paid for by the taxpayers, which is good. I support that because I don't want to grow up in a nation of completely dumb people. So I want everyone to have a basic education. And then after that, uh, you got to pay for post-secondary. I actually got accepted into the University of Winnipeg and University of Manitoba. I was going to study criminology. I wanted to be a police officer. But I ended up uh, not going, even though I got accepted. I wanted to be a truck driver, <laughs> and here I am. I'm actually very happy with my choice. I love doing what I do, and I don't think I would love being a cop as much. But I couldn't say because I've never been one. I mean, being a police officer, you have to deal with the worst of the worst of society every day. All of the scumbags that I avoid now all of the neighborhoods that I avoid now are the people in the neighborhoods that I would be in every day as a police officer, dealing with them from the beginning to the end of my shift. And it's not all bad, I mean, being a cop. There's there's a lot of rewards about it. There's, there's the camaraderie, the brotherhood of being with your other officers. I guess you can't say brotherhood anymore because that's probably not politically correct. 
I can't keep up with that either. And as a cop, you got to be pretty politically correct because, you know, you offend the wrong person and right away as they get all mad at you and blame you for all of their problems. Now I work by myself. I can take my dog to work with me all the time. Spend 24-7 with my dog. I get to travel the continent. I get to see all of the United States and Canada. Though we don't go to the southwest of the U.S. very often. I've asked for loads down there, but we got no no, uh, no routes going down there. But I usually, you know, every couple of years, I, I go down there on a road trip in my personal vehicle. And now I own my own business too, right? Whereas if I'm a cop, well, I'm never going to own my own business. I can't own the police department. Unless if I become the king, I guess. And that's pretty hard for me to do. Can't just walk into the palace one day and be like, hey, I'm king now. People seem to frown on that. My friend, when there is a stoplight, why are you stopping in the left lane? Now both lanes are at a crawl. You should be in the right lane, buddy. Let the four wheelers pass. But anyway, I'm in uh, Naperville, Illinois here, which is practically Chicago. If you look at a map, it's Chicago. All the locals would be like, no, it's not Chicago, we're our own thing. No, it's Chicago. Look at a map, it's all the same thing. <laughs> to an outsider coming in like me, it's all the same thing. This is a mega city, it's just huge. All the way from the lake, all the way out to like Montgomery and Aurora there where, where I delivered, it's all one city. Just sprawling. It's so fascinating to see and come and take a look at it. Man, I wouldn't want to live with around this many people. But that's just me. That's just me. I'm a rural country boy. I, I, I like it out there better. But, you know, I'm not knocking the city because there's a lot of... You're still in the left lane, buddy. What? This guy's right beside me here. Why? A long lineup of cars behind you that would like to get to work. Why are you blocking them? when people do that. They do that in Winnipeg too all the time. There's no reason for him to be in that lane. Well, he might be making a left turn soon, but I mean, he's been in this left lane for quite a while now. Are you going to go in front of me? Is that what you want to do? Because you're speeding now. You're really speeding. Yikes. There you go. There you go. There you go. Very good. See now all these cars that want to get past can get past, except now they're not in a hurry. What do I know? What do I know? Look at these suburbs here on the right. Beautiful homes. Just massive homes. I would like to have one of these homes on our property. They seem a little bit plain though. Maybe it's sort of like cookie cutter, like they're all practically that there's only like three different kinds of houses here I wouldn't want to have the exact same home as my neighbors I want a different one well I arrived here and checked in at my shipper but they are really busy right now got all these guys over here waiting you too so I've got to move on down the road to the truck stop apparently and wait there because they're running out of room here and they're gonna give me a call when they're ready for me. But just for the record, I was here five minutes early for my appointment. 
Appointments don't always mean something. <laughs> I don't know where this van guy is going, but I've got to make a U-turn and get out of here. Without causing more trouble. Is this guy leaving too, or what is this guy doing? Which way are you going, buddy? I know it's a parking lot, but signals do help. Even in a parking lot. Okay, so you're turning right. Okay. You see, I almost cut in beside you there. And that would have caused a bit of a kerfluffle, because I didn't know what you were doing. Didn't know if you were going straight. Didn't know if you were turning right here. But okay, whatever. Guess that's my job, to pay attention. So I guess I'll be going around and loading right where all these guys are loading right in front of me here. And then I have to strap it and tarp it before I leave here. Goody. At least it's a paved lot. This guy in front of me is also going to the same truck stop as me to wait there. He was really not happy about that. He wanted to stay here and wait, but they told him to go like a block down the road wait at the truck stop. He was not happy. And he's obviously in no hurry though. What are you getting paid by the hour, buddy? Come on, let's get out of here. I want to go and park. This guy's going through the scale, but I don't think he's scaling. Again, buddy, I don't know where you're going. I'm just going to wait here. Pretty sure he's going to park up in front of the line here. And I want to back in beside this peat, if at all possible. right beside this red peat. We're off in the back, in the back corner where no one will bug me and I'm out of the way. And for some reason my audio was not working here. I was talking this whole time, but I got called back to the customer here to go line up in their yard. It was kind of a weird system, but here we are in line. I got about four or five trucks in front of me here. We got one, two, three, four, six or seven off getting loaded way off to the right there. And, uh, yeah, I just got to wait for them to throw those shingles on the trailer, and then we will be on our way. And here I was doing something. Talking to you guys again. I think I was talking to you here about uh, how I, I was sent a message on my satellite, on my computer, in my truck, that I had to tarp this load. But the guys here at the yard looked at me funny, said, no one tarps these loads. And I looked around, and sure enough, no one was tarping. I mean, there were curtain side trailers, but anyone without a curtain side trailer was not tarping their load. So I called in and said, what's up? Do I got to tarp this stuff or what? No one else is doing it. These guys say I don't need to do it. They're looking at me funny. And they said, no, that was actually a mistake in my computer. I don't have to tarp it. So... That was a bonus. All I gotta do is tie it down, and I can get out of there. I can save myself a, like an hour at least. Don't have to tarp it. And save myself time on the other end as well, with not having to untarp it. didn't take too long we just got called in we're gonna get loaded up I don't see anyone else really tarping it I see these curtain side trailers but no one else is tarping it I'm gonna be the only dude that has to tarp this stuff aren't I oh. I think he's gonna load me right here Okay. Looks like this is the spot. He is loading me up there with all this stuff right here. So we got some good news. We don't have to tarp it after all. That was a mistake in my messaging. Because the guy here looked at me funny when I said, uh, where do I tarp it? He's like, I don't know, man. No one tarps these loads. You need a tarp it? Oh. 
my computer says I got a tarp it. And so he's like, all right, well, then he pointed to an area. Well, I guess you can go and tarp it over there if you need to. And uh, so I called into to the office, to the load gods, and I asked them this, or I told them, this guy kind of looked at me funny when I said I had to tarp it. And no one else here is tarping the loads. Uh, do we have a special request to tarp? And he's like, no, 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 I don't know. That must have been a mistake. So Good. So it was a mistake that I got told. <laughs> now I'm going to double check every time. Because just because my satellite tells me that, my computer here, just because it tells me that I need to tarp it doesn't necessarily mean I have to tarp it. I would have wasted like an hour at least tarping this load here when I didn't have to. So this is going to be quick. I think it'll be real quick. I just got 14 pallets to throw on me. Throw a couple of straps over that, make sure they don't fly away, and I'm out of here. And apparently my receiver is first come first serve. It's said in here also that I had an appointment at 12 noon tomorrow. That was a lie as well. First come first serve. So I got to get in there as early as I can. And then I got to go over to our steel place again, pick up another one of those wide loads of steel. One of those ones with the very nice numbers attached to it. I'm very excited about those numbers. It's, it, it's, a, it's a good paying load. So that's going to Alberta, I think, to the oil fields again. And I don't, it's probably going to that same site that doesn't like dogs. But Britt wanted to come with me. If I'm passing by home, I wanted to stop by at home and pick up Britt and the dogs. So I think what we might, I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe it's going to a different site. Maybe. But the people here, like it's the same company in Ontario that ships it to the oil fields in Alberta. And I talked to the boss here in Ontario and told them about their, uh, discrimination when it came to canines and he wasn't happy about that at all he was a big dog person he he was petting diesel like crazy he loved diesel and uh, I'm gonna go talk to him again tomorrow he told me that if they ever give me problems again about having my dog in the truck that I'm supposed to tell them to call him and he'll straighten them out because it shouldn't shouldn't be a problem to have my dog in my truck on an oil field site it's not a food grade site it's not a dangerous goods site it's not a hazardous material site it's just they're just building big bins big steel bins that's it and he's like there's no reason they should not let dogs in your truck he could understand if the dog got out of the truck and i, I told him too i said well yeah i i'm sure that some driver ruined it and went to the site and just let his dog out and let it run around while he was like untarping the load or something and it got in the way of all the workers and there's big machinery and cranes and tractors all over the site there yeah you don't want to have your dogs out of your truck but he did say if they're in, if he's inside your truck just make sure he stays in your truck there's they should not have a problem with that so i'll talk to him about it again tomorrow and if he if he's in charge and he's the one who calls the shots like it sounded like it was last time like last time i dropped diesel off at home anyway just in case but talk to him again and if he says that he i'm supposed to tell them to call him if they got a problem with my dog well then i'm going to pick up brit at home and we're going to take the whole family along for that week it's like two days out to the the job site and then get reloaded and two days back home i'm really excited to have her with me on uh, friday my truck is getting detailed. The whole inside of the truck is getting detailed. I'm taking everything out and there's a professional that's going to come and clean everything inside here. So that when Britt gets in the truck, it's it's presentable. Because I can't clean. I mean, I can, I can clean up a little bit, but I can't make it look new. So it will look brand new after next weekend. I guess we'll see. We'll get loaded up here and we'll head towards Ontario. I would like to stop at the gym again later today uh, probably the one in schwartz creek michigan again they had good truck parking there good truck access i'll probably stop by there again on the way we'll see how long i'm here for now that i'm not tarping i have a little bit of extra time that i didn't know i had excited about that is he almost done he's got two four he's putting the fifth one on right now and i need 14. Hurry up and wait. Who wants to talk to me? Bridge to Canada, this way. We'll be crossing into Sarnia, Ontario from Port Huron, Michigan. Same thing as last week. And we'll probably go to that same Petropass too in London. 
I liked it there. I still gotta check when I stop and have time. Maybe while I'm waiting in line at the border, I don't know. I gotta check to see if they have showers there. I'd love to have a shower. The gym I stopped at in Schwartz Creek today uh, didn't have a shower. I really wish every Snap Fitness had a shower. But I didn't have time. I'm once again cutting her close here to get to the border. I've got <laughs> 10 minutes to get over that bridge. I'll make it, no problem. But same thing as last week. It's like deja vu. Cutting her pretty close again. But we did get our workout in. I didn't get any cardio in today, but I was in the gym for about 45 to 50 minutes. Now we gotta pay our dues to get across the bridge. Gotta all these no parking signs here obviously mean nothing. Because every time I go through here, guys are parked here. But I have to pay money to get back into my own country. Isn't that silly? They build a nice big bridge, but then they charge you to go home. My God, you're, I know you like me. I mean, obviously, because you're charging me to leave. So you obviously want me to stay that bad, right? Let's pay here. I got $20 US for them. I think it's $16.25 US to cross here. Let's see. Hello. Thank you. Nineteen fifty this week. I guess because I have a triaxle trailer, I have an extra axle on this trailer, so they charge me extra. I know, right? Ridiculous. Same weight. Whatever, whatever. Can you imagine those trailers around here that have like ten axles? I've seen them. They exist around here. That must be expensive to cross with those things. So it was 1950 US to cross. Hashtag not impressed with the price. But I am a little flattered that America wants me to stay so badly that they're actually going to, you know, fine me to leave. That is flattering. I love you too, America. I'll see you again, though. Don't worry. I'm not going back home for good. I'm going to come visit again. We're here in Wyoming. Not that Wyoming. Wyoming, Ontario. We're going to spend the night here at this Flying J. According to their app, they have four showers here. So I'm going to go make use of one of them. Hopefully I can find a, a parking spot here. This is just inside the Canadian border. Probably about 10 minutes from Sarnia, Ontario, which is the border town, just on this side. And I hope they actually do have showers here. Because sometimes these, because this was a truck stop that was sort of turned into a flying J, right? Sometimes these ones lie in the app. <laughs> is this how I get in here? Is this a driveway? Because there's a big curb here for no reason. Look at all these drop trailers taking up space here. I hope they're paying for that. I really hope they are. Look at that. I could use one of those spots. I'll take it out. exactly where I'm gonna park hopefully there's an open spot here I might have to turn around oh yeah there's open spots oh but that guy's got a reefer that's why no one's parked beside him <laughs> oh, sorry buddy nobody wants to park by you oh this guy's got a reefer too ah, I don't want to park by you either maybe there's a spot down here 
these all wide loads. That guy's got a reefer too. Bang it. I might have to settle. Oh wait, nope, there's a spot right here. <laughs> I don't have to park beside a reefer. All right, Diesel, there we go. What do you think? Very nice parking job, man. Very nice. Couldn't have done it better myself if I had dumbs. Really? Do you really mean that? Thank you. What a nice compliment. We're off here in the back corner all by ourselves, right beside this guy. He's got a, a wide load on of farm equipment, so you know he's not going to be noisy. He's got an APU as well. So anyway, that, that's the day. So the reason we pushed it to get over the border today yet into Canada was the same reason as last week. So that I don't have to stop as long for night. Here on the Canadian side, I've only got to stop for eight consecutive hours before I can start my next day, my day tomorrow. Whereas if I would have stopped in the US, I would have had to stop for 10 consecutive hours. So I gain two hours tomorrow, I can get to my appointment or I can get to my uh, receiver two hours earlier than I could have if I would have stayed on that side. And it's first come, first serve. So I'll get there as early as I can. And then from there, I'll go and get reloaded. And then I'll be two hours ahead on my whole day. Because tomorrow when I load up that wide load, I'm not allowed to pull it through Ontario on the two lane roads up north during the night. So I want to get as much done during the daylight as possible before the sun sets. We'll see how far we get. I'd like to get up to North Bay. I don't think I'll take the 17 because those loads are very heavy. That's why I have the triaxle. It's 65,000 pounds of steel. So I'll probably take 11 just because it's flatter, less hills. Uh, so hopefully I can make it up to North Bay. Who knows, maybe I can make it all the way up to Cochrane, Alberta, but we'll probably shoot for North Bay. We'll be pretty lucky if we get there already. Anyways, thanks for joining me today. I think today was a bit of a longer vlog. I seem, I feel like I talked a lot today. So, uh, I apologize if you don't like it, and uh, you're welcome if you like the longer stuff. <laughs> well, there's another vlog coming tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to be as long as this one, but thanks for watching today's. Anyways, give it a thumbs up for me. I really appreciate that. does more for me with the algorithms than you think here on YouTube. Or you can give it a thumbs down. It does the exact same thing to help me with the algorithms. And leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're feeling. All right, I'll talk to you tomorrow.